Come on, let's praise the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Lord, we come before your throne of grace this morning, giving you thanksgiving, because this is the day that you've made. And you made it so that we could rejoice and be glad in it. And we say thank you for this day. We don't know what it holds, but yet we know that you hold our future. We know that we're in your hands, and we just say thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Father, we just thank you for the services this morning. We thank you for our pastors, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, in advance that all of their needs are met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you're keeping them in good health, divine health, supernatural health in the name of Jesus. We thank you that no weapon that's formed against them will prosper, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for the wisdom of God being theirs. We thank you for the manifestation of your presence in this place this morning. We thank you, Lord God. We, we just give this service to you. You be in charge. You are in charge. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do. We lift up the name of Jesus. We pray for every organization in this church, Lord God. We ask you to bless them, bless them, bless us, Father God. Meet the needs of your people today. You know what our needs are, Lord God. And you said before we call, you've already answered. So we thank you, Lord God, for answering prayer, things that we've asked you about that haven't yet manifested, Lord God. Lord, my prayer today is that we do not become weary in well-doing, that we do not give up, that we continue to walk by faith and not by sight. And we thank you, Father God, for what you're doing in our midst today. We give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Sure did weep at Lazarus' death. Jesus wept. Okay. Uh, let's read the 91st Psalms. Okay. Well, the gym is paying for the reading of the word. That's okay. That ain't the first one. And it won't be the last one. Okay, the 91st Psalms, and let's read it together, those that can read. And the King, I'll be reading, is this the King James? New King James. New King James, okay. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous presence, pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is your, my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Rock of Ages.
Hallelujah. Rock of ages, you are faithful and true. You are able to do what you have promised. Rock of ages, you are faithful and just. I will always put my trust in you. Again. Rock of ages. You are faithful and true. You are faithful and true. You are able to do. You are able to do what you promise. Rock of ages. Rock of ages. You are faithful and just. I will always put my trust in you. You're a shelter. You're a shelter in a time of trouble. A refuge. A refuge in a time of storm. You're a fortress. A fortress in a time of struggle. A tower in a time of war. You're a healer. You're a healer in a time of sickness. A comfort in a time of dream. Stronghold in the time of weakness, a helper in the time of pain. Rock of ages, you are faithful and true. You are able to do what you have promised. Rock of ages, rock of ages, you are faithful and just. You are faithful and. I will always put my trust. I will always put my trust in you. You're a shelter. You're, You're a shelter a in the time of trouble. A refuge. A refuge in the time of storm. Your fortress. A fortress in the time of struggle. A tower in the time of war. You're a healer. You're a healer in the time of sickness. A comfort, a comfort in the time of grief. A stronghold, a stronghold in the time of weakness. A helper in the time of truth. You're a shelter, you're a shelter in the time of trouble. A refuge in the time of storm. You're a fortress, you're a fortress in the time of struggle. A tower in the time of war. You're a healer, you're a healer in the time of a comfort, a comfort in the time of dreams. You're a stronghold in the time of darkness. A helper in the time of fear. Rock of ages. You are faithful and true. You are able to do what you have promised. Rock of I will always put my trust in you. I will always put my trust in you. I will always put my trust in you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He is able, more than able, to accomplish what concerns me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is able, more than able, to accomplish, to, to accomplish what concerns me today.
he cares for you he really does care for us and I want you to know that I'm very appreciative of everything that everyone has done for me while I was out uh, I went to the hospital three times the last time I don't know what happened but I saw light and I said Lord is this it I don't remember uh, I saw a light and I said, Lord, is this it? I said, is, am I going to heaven or am I going to hell? I said, I want to go to heaven. And I went blank. It went dark. And I woke up to the paramedics taking me down my 17 steps to the ambulance. 
So I'm thankful for all of you, your prayers, the money. It, it took care of me um, buying groceries for myself. Um, the phone calls, everything is so, I was so overwhelmed and thankful. The Lord is faithful, he's good. And my prayer for each and every one of you is a hundredfold and to cast all your cares upon him because yes, he does care for you. And there's nothing impossible, absolutely nothing impossible with God. And learn how to quickly, quickly repent and forgive. Because in that, I say, Lord, I forgive everything. Everything I thought and everything. All of that went through those, I don't know how many minutes it was. And the paramedic said, I don't know, your pressure must have gone down to 34 or something. I don't remember. And when I came home, my living room was, it was already looking like a hoarder lived there, but all of the chairs and syringes were on the floor and everything. So I don't know what happened, but I know God brought me through. And I thank you, I thank you, I thank you for your prayers because prayer works. Thank you. I believe the Lord, because he meets our needs, amen. And when two or three are gathered there, he is in the midst, so therefore there's no lack, amen. I take authority over the spirit of heaviness in the house. If that's applying to you, that last song was a rhema word from God that you're holding, containing things that he does not want you to hold and contain. So right now, by the obedience of the Holy Spirit, this applies to you. How do you deal with the spirit of heaviness? Spirit of praise. Stand on your feet and start praising the Lord. Right now, I take authority over that spirit. Come on, you're here. Heaviness, heaviness, go in the name of Jesus. Heaviness, go. Come on, saints, fight. Pray in the Holy Ghost. If it's not you, pray for the people. Lift your hands and go into a, a, an ordinate praise. Come on. Spirit of praise will come against the spirit of heaviness. Come on, musicians, come on, wherever we are. Come on, come against us right now. Out of this house in the name of Jesus. We will cast every care on you. Right now, we break the boundaries of oppression, depression. In the name of, come on, saints, dig in deep. Come on, praise him. The praise of the comely is good. Hallelujah, we break every bounds. Put dancing in their feet. Hallelujah, song in their mouths. Hallelujah, we will praise the Lord. We will praise the Lord. We will praise the Lord. Move what you couldn't move before. There's an atmosphere of activation and deliverance. Come on, saints. This is Shabbat. Come on. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Oh, come on, saints. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father, that we have what we say. And we come against the spirit of heaviness. It is not for the people of God. We cast our care on you. Hallelujah. And every high thought that would exalt itself against the word of God, that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. Claim it in Jesus' name. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I'm here to read the announcements, but uh, before I start the announcement, I have a confession to make. Um, I believed, I woke up this morning, and I believed that the dryer has been shrinking my clothes. Um, and then I uh, found out that it was the refrigerator all along. <laughs> so here are our announcements. Uh, Hebrews 10.25 says, this is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together, as some have formed the habit of doing. In fact, we should come together even more frequently. We invite all members and friends of the Los Angeles Shabbat Church to come together and participate in the following weekly phone conference meetings for 2022. Prayer every Monday through Friday from 10 to 11 a.m. All Tuesday Bible studies have been postponed until further notice. 
Tuesday evening prayer from 6 to 6.30 to 7. Men Talk meets the first and second Tuesday of the month from 7 to 8 p.m. Men Talk is for men only, ages 18 and up. Goal Setting. This is on Wednesdays from 6 to 7 p.m. In Goal Setting, we come together to share long and short-term goals and receive encouragement and prayer to carry that out. Comforted is a support group for people who have lost loved ones. The loss can be recent or in the past. Comforted meets every other Thursday from 6 to 7 p.m. Future meeting dates are April 7th and the 21st and May 5th through the 19th and the 19th. We invite you to visit our church website at lasfc.org where all of this information including phone numbers and access codes are listed on the first page and under announcements. I learned Wednesday of a, a loss of a relative in my life, my sister-in-law, first uh, sister-in-law, uh, Florence Grady, that's Ketron and Ramel's mom. Ketron and Ramel are my brother's two daughters, my nieces. And, um, Did you know that when you obey God, it helps whenever there's a loss? You know, there was nothing that I could say, oh, I wish I would have told her this. I wish I had let her know how much I love her. Or I wish this, or I wish that. I wish, you know, every day we need to understand that we're here to love. You know, I heard Marvin Sapp one day, and it was a wonderful, I went to a conference in uh, uh, Tennessee. And um, he was one of the speakers and he was saying that when he was in the third grade, the first day of school, he got to school bright and early and went in the classroom and it was empty and then children started coming in, you know. And he noticed one little girl came in and he'd never seen her at the school in his previous school semesters but she just stood there at the door looking around and he said his heart just leaped and he jumped up and he went over there and he said my name's Marvin what's your name she told him he said are you new at this school she said I don't know anybody and he grabbed her by the wrist and said come over here sit with me because see you know somebody now I'm Marvin you know so you <laughs> And he said, from that day on, they were together. And he said, they went to the same junior high, the same high school, they went to college together. They graduated, got their bachelor's degrees at the same time. And the next day, the day after uh, they graduated from college was their marriage ceremony. And so he said, and I've been with my girl for all these years since the third grade, loving her. And, and he was saying how he asked God about this, uh, the finality that he was experiencing and how painful it was. And we have these little children that uh, I'm gonna have to raise. They had three, three children and they were quite minor. They weren't, you know half grown even and um, the Lord spoke to him and when the Lord spoke to him he spoke to me he said think about how you've honored her from the day you've met her and I thought about scripture think on these things things that are lovely pure and a good report you know you have control over your mind and what you think on. And any intrusion that brings grief and sorrow, you can rebuke. You don't have to think on terror. You don't have to think on pain and shamefulness. You don't have to think on any of those things because there's something called the blood of Jesus. And it will wash away yesterday's sin. But when Marvin Sapp was talking, he said, the Lord told him, look, Marvin, this is the way it is. Everybody 
that you know and everybody that you don't know has the same assignment. You're gonna be out of here. Live like you know it. Yes, yeah, she passed of uh, cancer. But, and the kids were so young. And, um, and he said, he said God told him to look around in that funeral. You know, the people that were there. He said, every single one in this room is going to leave before you or you're going to leave before them. He said, but y'all getting out of here. He said, you don't have time for unforgiveness. You don't have time for vengeance. You don't have time to ignore, well, I'll just ignore them. You don't have time to scratch people off of your list that I have put on the list by my blood. I've sacrificed so every last one of you could have life eternal in me. Not one of you rated it by your perfection, nor your works of righteousness that you've done. So who are we? to say, I'm not speaking to so-and-so. I just scratch it. It's not the spirit of God. When you start interacting with people like God wants you to, I mean, it will help lift all that garbage that the devil wants to load by truckloads on you. Amen. You know, I have told people I love them, and, and they're bottom chin trembles and they said that's something I, I haven't been able to say yet can you tell somebody you love them you know can you you know this one man he said I, I, I just can't get those words out he's got a wife children and grandchildren and he can't say I love you did you know he that loveth not knoweth not God? That's why you can't say it, because you don't know him in the power of his resurrection. That's why you keep cons consistently arguing and trying to control folk. Control is witchcraft. It's not of God. Well, they didn't do what I told them to do, so I, so God gave them the right to even go to hell if they wanted. Amen. The spirit of control needs to be for you. Self-control. Now, you, you get you together. I don't like what somebody did. Well, that's where forgiveness comes in, because you don't like it. Never, ever, ever think that you got time. Do you hear what I'm telling you? Amen. You don't know that. Amen. You don't know that. What you know is you have this breath. Amen. This breath. Let go of control. Let go of the isolation. Let go of the compartmentalizing. Well, this so-and-so, well, what race are they? What is, the Lord showed me that was sin. My, when, when I was a child coming up, my parents told me, crimes are committed by certain races. Now, you won't find this race doing that, but you'll find this race frequently doing that. And I believed them until I got in the Word. Do you know sin doesn't have a color? Amen. And then they'd say, mm -hmm, I knew it. That was a so-and-so man. The devil is lying to you. Sin doesn't have a color. Sin, we were all born in it and we every color. And your choice to love will cause sin to be wiped out. If you can't even tell a person that has been ugly and acted like your enemy, if you can't tell them you love them, you're not ready. You're not ready. Because love is of God. 
It doesn't get deposited and then jump up and leave. Love is not a flexible thing that says, depending on, now I love them if they. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells you what love is. But love is consistent. God told you in Matthew 5, 44, what to do with your enemies. Love them. <laughs> we can't tell people that aren't our enemies that we love them. Love is a commodity that comes when you receive it from God. You can't get it with porn. You can't get it on the singles line. Maybe, maybe I'll find somebody left. looking for love in all the wrong places. Have you looked at Jesus? He's the only one that offers it. You won't find a love like this anywhere else. Somebody said, I'm so lonely. I said, you know, there's a man that made you a promise. Oh, you got me wrong. Ain't nobody made me no promise. I said, yes, he did. He told me that he would never leave you or forsake you. Are you ignoring him? Do we ignore what God has said and bring the junk and the garbage of this world into our mindset and walk in that? No wonder there's such misery. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. How can you be alone? You can't. When you have received from the Lord, his, not only his resurrected life, but that you begin to walk in the life of love. Mm -hmm. I like what Linda said this morning, but forgiveness needs to be like that. Just like that. Some of us are thinking about it. After a while. <laughs> if they say this, people don't have to say they're sorry. They probably aren't <laughs> in many cases. But what does that have to do with you being filled with God's love so much so that it doesn't matter because you know no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. On your cross, it will not prosper. If any man will follow after me, he's got to take up his cross. Persecution is a cross. Lying on you is a cross. These are things that the enemy, who is a perpetrator, constantly uses these tools. And then here we fall for it. Because you don't know God is love. Why would you even blink when you see somebody has a water gun? It's not lethal. They might wet you, <laughs> but you know what I mean? I heard something yesterday on TV. This lady had a water gun. The other lady said, this is, she told him not to squirt her. This is my Sunday wig. Not, don't. <laughs> Our priorities, you know? You can't love until you submit to God. A lack of surrender is a lack of love. They're, they're equal. Because you run in your show instead of God. Until that time, until that time that you surrender, you won't be able to walk in love. God wants us to submit first our minds, which is that soul realm, to him. Uh, Psalms 25, verse 4. Thank you. The 
carnal mind, you know, is at enmity with God. What does enmity mean? In opposition to? Oh, by the way, I want to uh, uh, make an announcement in the middle of the sermon because I don't want to forget it, and I'm thinking about it now when I said enmity. Uh, I'm going to teach uh, me and some other people. We're going to teach a, a, a class on phonics. And um, I want to tell you to get your book because until people get a book, there's no need for me to teach it. But Ernestine Etter has the contact for how to get the book, and she's not here today. So I'm going to ask someone else that has that contact to give it to us before the service is over. Is there anyone that has that contact? Is it what? Fun. Right. Oh, good, you want to be on the team to teach? Wonderful. Okay, wonderful, Nellie. Because I'm going to Hawaii. That's my confession. <laughs> That's my confession. Okay. okay, okay. But I just need prayer when I go to Hawaii that I not become a stowaway and don't come back. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Make sure I don't act up. <laughs> okay, who has the uh, contact for the book? No, you got to get it from Ernestine. Stephanie, you got it? Okay, that's done. Okay, thank you. All right. So, um, today. Maybe we'll be able to start at the beginning of next month. This month is about gone, y'all. You know. Also, we're going to have something so exciting next Sunday. Next Sunday is we're celebrating resurrection, and we're going to have a, a dramatic uh, presentation. You know, ordinarily, traditionally, this is Palm Sunday, and this would have been our living Lord's Supper. But things have been different, yeah. So, um, but we will have a dramatic presentation. And I'm, I want to challenge you to bring a friend to church or bring an enemy or bring a stranger. Bring someone to church. That's part of evangelism. You never know. But one thing you do know, the word will be going forth. Amen. And that's always needed. All right, I said Psalms 25, verse 4. Make your ways known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. When people do not have teaching, they can't walk in the paths of the Lord because they don't know. You know, the Bible is like a, a, what we used to call a Thomas guide. Now we can call it a navigation system. What do they have in a car now? GPS. GPS, you know. That's what the Bible is. It'll show you how to get there, you know, where your destination is. And when you don't know, you keep going down the wrong street and you're lost. When you don't know the word of God, you, you, you make up stuff. You even make up things and decide they're religious. Uh, I can't tell you about people in Christ that don't have the word in them. See, you get in Christ by receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. But if you don't know what the word is, you're still ambulating, walking on your own. Still walking on your own. You don't have the navigation system, and so you're messing up. You're lost. You're lost. Saved, but in this journey, you're lost. Amen. Sometimes people are quoting things, and I said, where'd you get that from? Doesn't the Bible say it? No. No. But oh, I always thought the Bible said that. Sometimes we, we take, take things and, and run with it because somebody said it. Amen. Amen. Stereotypes. 
That's something right there that has been used by the enemy. And it's a grave distraction to love, you know. All men are so-and-so. All women are so-and-so. All children, they're just brats. There was, I was on an airplane and there was a man that saw a woman with two kids come in and he said it so loudly the whole plane could hear it. I don't want to be on the plane with kids. They're brats and they're this and they're that. And he went on so, and the woman could not have the kids sit with her the way the seating was. And he started hollering, good. And people started to grin, high-fiving over the seats and all of that. I asked, and I had a, a seat here and a seat there. No, a seat here and a seat in front. I asked the hostess, I said, may I have the children, please? Where did I get it? Jesus said it. Suffer the little children to come unto me. Don't forbid them. Sometimes we're saying what the devil says. They just work on my nerves. Great peace that have they that love thy law. Nothing works on your nerves. Nothing will offend you when you know the word and you submit to it. How many times have we tried to control people and that's not what the word says? Do you know that when you leave planet Earth, there's no marriage in heaven? And guess what? You're not married down here either. And if you have a spouse, do you know that that spouse is single? Hello? It's kind of quiet. Amen. Where are the rules of 10 years before you can remarry? Where are the rules? Down through the years, I've gotten so many people calling me. Daddy got me married. He must not have loved mother. You don't have to be in love with a memory. The word of God. When you know it, you'll stop punishing people for a liberty that God has given them. Because it's your opinion. If daddy really loved mama, how could he gotten married in six weeks? Must have been knowing that huzzy. <laughs> From whence come fightings? They come from the pit of hell. And until you ground yourself in the word of God, you're going to be an instrument of evil, not blessing. The devil will use you up. And you've got a charge to keep. And it's not even from God. Would that you evangelize like you do. To pursue the enemy's strategy. It's appointed unto man once to die. After that, the judgment. Do you even know what you're going to be judged on? <laughs> You've got to have him teach you his ways so you know his character. You've got to have him teach you his ways so you'll know all the things that you'll be judged on. How can you please somebody that you don't know? How can you please him? He wants you to walk in his character. And it's just the way I am. Yeah, your old flesh. And you won't kill your flesh because you're right. The Bible says a man is right in his what? In his own eyes. So you're always going to be right till you read this word. When truth comes, you can be set free. All right. So in, in Psalms uh, 25, verses 4 through 12, we're going to uh, go on reading because it's going to tell us what we need to submit. Okay, we stopped at verse 5. Yes. Guide me in your truth. See, there's some truth that we need to know about, and we need guidance. Teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. I wait for you all day long. Remember, Lord, your compassion and your faithful love, 
for they have existed from antiquity. Verse 7, do not remember the sins of my youth or my acts of rebellion in keeping with your faithful love. Remember me because of your goodness, Lord. Okay. I want to say something about this scripture. All of us have in common this desire for God not to remember. Okay. He told us if we confess our sins, he's what? And do what? And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then there are two things that you need to know. We're talking about learning about Jesus and his ways. You also need to forgive yourself. Amen. Satan will come with that stuff. Well, you know you, you messed up. You know you messed up. And, and, uh, and if you're not reading the word, you'll forget that he said, I threw that sin in the sea of forgetfulness. So God is not digging up yesterday. He's not digging up this morning. He's not digging it up. Anybody that digs up, come on now, anybody that digs up stuff, whether it's in your mind and it's the enemy, or whether it's you talking about, I done messed up, or if it's someone else, well, you know so-and-so is always so-and-so. Now, I'm not talking about lacking wisdom. If you know someone <clears throat> is in the throes of addiction, <clears throat> it is not wisdom for you to pay for their addiction. That's right. Hide your purse. That's right. You understand what I mean? That is not condemning, that's wisdom. Okay? If you know someone is a pedophile, why are your children spending the night over there? Right. This lady told me her grandfather raped her and her siblings coming and going. And she sends her kids over there. I said, why? Is well, I hope he stopped. I'm not condemning that man, but the Bible says wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. So it doesn't mean when you forgive, it doesn't mean that you fail to use caution. Amen. When you know something is too much for a person, you don't, you don't tempt them with it. Amen. And then the ways that we tempt ourselves. I don't understand. I had such great victory, such great victory, calling out on God about what I eat and what I don't eat. And a, a, a thing of cashews I ordered. So four or five is the portion. But the whole thing was gone in two days. And there was no one I could blame. So I should have, I didn't know about Carl's. <laughs> I should have blamed the refrigerator, you know. And I had, to, I had to confess it as sin and realize you haven't gone as far as you thought. It doesn't take but one slip up for the trigger to trigger. That's right. The next thing you know, you're going down the hill. That's right. So I, I, but I have to kill my flesh. Confession is good for the soul. Plus, the cashews did not taste good. Now, that's sad. That's sad. That's sad. They had no taste. They weren't roasted. It was OK that they were unsalted, but they weren't roasted. And there was no, no, I didn't say I just had a few. I said the thing is gone, empty in two days. Mm -hmm. It was a refrigerator. You know, in this flesh is no good thing and it doesn't get good later. It has to be killed. It has to be mortified. You have to talk to it, talk to it, talk to it, talk to it, talk to it. See, we forget life and death is in the power of the tongue. We don't talk 
to the adversary, the enemy, like we should. We don't talk to our addictions like we should. Now, I've been talking to cheesecake and everything else, successful. The only thing I said about those cashews was, was they don't have any taste. I guess I was trying to give them an opportunity <laughs> to get a taste. I, I don't know. But, you know, when you're out of control, it is not a joke. I don't care what it's about. Out of control. God told us not to let anything have dominion or power over us. Okay. So I have asked for forgiveness, and I'm going to uh, continue to share because we need to share. The Bible says confess your faults one to another, and it brings healing. Praise God. All right. So we know that we can have the exact things that we confess. We confess our faults. And he's faithful. All right. Most of your goals revolve around self-achievement. When you think about your goals, it's always, I want this because I want that. Self-achievement, you know. Self-gratification. No matter how good or no, how, no matter how meaningful our goals and our desires are, they cannot compare to the deep peace and joy that you'll find when you follow God's master plan for you. Amen. Have you asked him, what is it that you want for me to do? Guess what? There's a reason all of us woke up this morning. Amen. And we might not really know why. It's not to have three square meals. It's not just to exist another day. He has a plan. And if you don't know his plan, you won't walk in it. Amen. 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 And we can talk about love all day, but if you don't know what it looks like, amen. amen. One of the things that you will know about love consistently is that it's giving. Love is sacrificial. Amen. And our selfishness doesn't want us to love anybody. What's in it for me? Janet Jackson, what have you done for me lately? Okay, so every person belongs to God. Psalms 24, verse 1. Got it? It says, the earth and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants belong to the Lord. He laid its foundation on the seas, and he established it on the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? who may stand in his holy place, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not set his mind on what is false and who has not sworn deceitfully. He will receive blessings from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation, since such is the generation of those who seek him and who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Selah. No. This is talking about goals. Seeking the face of God. This word is his face. You want to see his face? This is it. It's his continence. It's his will. Everything about him. All right. But when our minds are not focused on him, we go on roller coaster rides. All of us. A roller coaster ride in your flesh. And for those of you that are in my age group, you might remember a descriptive ride from Disneyland called Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. It's gone now, but it's in the lives of people that don't walk after God's plan. Oh, I got an idea. Is it from God? But seems to me, is it from God? Well, in my opinion, is it from God? Do we even ask the man that made us? What do you want, Lord? Why did you wake up this morning? Why did, why am I here today? Why? And our whole life consists of day after day him waking us up and many of us not knowing his plan, not knowing why. 
That's more than a foul ball. Ask him, why am I here? All right. So God created us, and in Job 33, 4, it says he gave us life. Every person belongs to God. We just read that in Psalms 24, 1. Did you know that people that are not saved belong to God? Every person belongs to God. I didn't say they were saved. I didn't say they were heaven bound. You know what? The church isn't even heaven bound. He's taking the church out of the church. All of us aren't going in. Because all the tantrums and the self-will, I don't care how he's covered you with the blood. The Bible says that you're going to give an account for the deeds done in your body. The deeds done in our body. So he's still watching how we kill this flesh. Believers are made for his glory. Isaiah 43, 7. I want three people to read that from three different translations. Isaiah. What did I say? 43, 7? Okay, now, that's not going to pick up on the tape. Oh, Lois has the mic. She's going to bring it to you, Nelly. Oh, well, who was first? Okay, Larry. Would you do the next one, Nelly? Ephesians 2.10. Thank you. Even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Praise God. We belong to God. Tell, tell your neighbor, I belong to God. I belong. And what did he form you for? What was his purpose? For his glory. For his glory. It's not about you. The enemy's goal is for you not to glorify God. Okay. God planned good things for each one of us. All right, Nellie. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. All right, that's Ephesians 2.10. God has planned good things for us. You know, anytime God asks you to do something, remember, it is not for your demise. It's a good thing. God does not call you. You know, I've heard people say, I've just been running from the Lord. Why would you run from a good thing? If you're running from a good thing, you must be running toward what? A bad thing. Because you've left the providence of good stuff. Do you know that he's your friend? Amen. Until we know him and the power of his resurrection, we'll keep thinking. But he knows I messed up. But if you confess your sin, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God would have fellowship with no one if he didn't forgive us. There would be nobody he could talk to on earth. He showed us that. He came down uh, trying to find one righteous. He's got to wash us. He's got to forgive us. Our, our mistakes, our rebellion, everything. Other than that, we can't fellowship with him. And he loves man. He loves man. He loves us so much he gave his life. Stop listening to the enemy rehearsing to you your failures. And let's start walking in the pleasing of God. Okay? And stop telling other people, oh, I remember that day that you messed up. If God doesn't mention it to them, why are you unearthing something that he threw in the sea of forgetfulness? Wrong. Amen. That blood is a cleanser. Okay, um, 
1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. I need somebody to read that. I guess I could, but. Uh huh. You have it, Nellie? Can you give her the mic? Janelle is going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. What translation is this? King James is fine. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. All right. You cannot fathom the things. The Bible says it hasn't even entered into your heart the things that he has for you. The only way you're going to know is by submission. Submission, submission. You know, the Bible says God says about us, man makes plans. But God determines our steps. He makes plans all day. Good plans, lofty plans. But you got a boss, and his name is God, Jesus. You got a boss. Amen. So God wants us to enter into trust, to trust him on a daily basis that his plan is working. The enemy's job is to get you out of the word, out of the church, out of relationship, out of fellowship, out of family, want you to be one of those people. We haven't heard from bruh for seven years. We don't know if he's dead or alive. Out, out, out. Just, he comes to divide. He comes to destroy. Every entity that God has ordained work together. The Bible says, a house divided against itself, what? Yes. Can not stand, don't think. If you take your bat and ball and go somewhere else, now nah, I'm going to stand no, because you're dividing the house. Well, they don't do what I want, then forgive them. You just don't know how suffocating it is. Get you some oxygen. That's right. Love is the oxygen. It'll help you breathe. Amen. Do you know how many people, I'm going to say this in closing, do you know how many people filed for divorce and have gotten no counseling? A great majority. They don't go to marriage counseling. Do you know how many people have problems and they do not seek counsel, godly counsel? The Bible says in the multitude of godly counsel, there's safety. We don't seek safety. I'm out of here. When I do marriage counseling, the first question I ask people is, I give them a little tablet, you know, and pen. I want you to write down what is a deal breaker for you in a union. They make these long lists about what they won't tolerate and what they can't stand, and this is my pet peeve, and better not find out they're a liar. I can't stand a liar, and better not so-and-so, and if they so-and-so, and, and even if they eat my food and I had my name on it, on my leftovers, I just can't take it. So I thank them for coming and I tell them their counseling is over. I don't have nothing to work with. You have a made up mind about your unforgiveness. What you're not gonna, well you told us to say what we weren't gonna take and I had to be truthful, that's right. Truth set you free. The truth is you don't need to be married. Every, not every day, every minute in a marriage, you have to be available to forgive. 
and not just every minute in a marriage, but any relationship. I have a friend, uh, when she was a child, they had a dog, and the dog's name was Diddy Bite You. <laughs> and she said they called him Diddy for short. Uh, Diddy Bite You. Think about your relationships. We bite people. The Bible talked about it. It said if you bite and devour, you'll soon be what? Consumed one of another. Until you learn to love God with everything that's in you, which means surrender, even the cashews, surrender whatever. You're not fit for the master's use because you're going to be trying to tell him I'm not going to Nineveh I'm going to Tarsus show you I don't want a whale to swallow me or a tuna or a mackerel or a shark or nothing else no Many of us are swallowed up in our own destruction because we fail to submit to the word and we think we've got it made in the shade. I just want to introduce a time of repentance right now. If you would just talk to God about the things that you've been stubborn about. <laughs> Even thinking you have an agenda. Did he write the agenda? <laughs> Father, hear our confessions and our repentance in Jesus' name. Amen. Ask him to forgive you and cleanse you. Even telling God after a while, or maybe, or when I get through with this, then I'll. Today, if you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. Say, yes, Lord. Uh -huh. I hear the Lord saying there's a call of God on, on your life, and you need to make a public confession of that call of God. The Lord wants you to just stand. If you've not confessed it publicly, just stand. If you know God's hand is on you for ministry, stand in the sanctuary right in front of your seat. If you have not told God, acknowledge that the call of God is on your life for the ministry, uh -huh, for him to use you. Bless the Lord, bless the Lord.